In the summer of 72, the summer of Wings, WNO481 was chosen to become the 1972 Wings tour bus. It then carried Paul McCartney and Linda McCartney, their children Heather, Mary and Stella McCartney, Wings members Denny Lane, Henry McCullough, Denny Sywell, their wives and girlfriends, to 25 concerts in 25 cities in nine countries across Europe racking up over 12,000 kilometres, 7,500 miles. Stay with us to find out how a seaside special open-top double-decker bus came to live the dream of rocking and rolling with the biggest music star in the world on its legendary family and band adventure. If we're going to be in Europe in the summer, you know, going to places like south of France, you know. It's just silly to just be in some little box all day, gasping for air and stuff. So we came with this idea to have a open deck, you know, upper deck kind of thing. Um, we've got some mattresses up there, you know, so we can just cruise along. Fantastic. It's just great, just lie around, you know, just to get the sun, you see. I mean, I, we also worked with uh, Paul McCartney um, the same year, 72, uh, Wings Over Europe um, did a six-week tour of Europe and John said to me, uh, John Morris that is, said look Paul wants to travel in a double-decker bus so um, could you talk him out of it because all the, the other vehicles are top of the line Mercedes and the bus will never keep up with them. So I said sure. So of course I met Paul and I didn't talk him out of it. I thought it was a fantastic idea and went away to get it together and um, of course I had it painted up like a magical mystery tour. The guys that were painting it were still painting it uh, as we drove down to the south of France to meet the band. So you know I let the guy, I think they did it deliberately so they could come for the ride. I then met the band in Marseille with, with this bus which they hadn't seen since uh, I'd, Paul and I had talked about it and of course I'd gone one farther and got an open top bus and I put um, uh, airplane seats in the ground floor and really good sound system and bunks for the kids, which would include Stella McCartney. And on the top floor, I took all the seats out and made the whole thing mattress and cushions. It was like a hippie heaven come uh, the yellow submarine type feel. They'd had a really rough journey. Their plane was delayed and every, God knows what, everything was wrong. And suddenly <laughs> this bus arrived. I painted a mural for Keith Moon, um, you know, drummer with a who, in 71, 25 foot long roughly. It was in, he, he lived in a, a five pyramid house, if you can work that one out. There was a big pyramid in the middle and then another one stuck on each corner and one of them was his bar. And this was, this, it was in the bar that I'd done it. It was Marvel Comics. I was really heavily into Marvel Comics. We need this bus painted. Fancy having a go at it. We want to do it like a bit yellow submarine -y, you know. It gelled from there. And originally we were supposed to have about 10 days to do it. Um, and there was a timetable, but, well, we ended up with four days, basically. But all the same, we, we got it done. We done it. It felt great, because this was a, a, a beetle, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it felt great. Oh, wow, yeah, OK, we'll do that. We'll do a good job on it. You know, of course it was good. It's looks great in the CV, doesn't it, you know? Basically, how to fill a bus up with large blocks of colour in peculiar shapes that were going to attract attention as it rolled along the road at 45 miles an hour. <laughs> it's like a billboard, but it's a moving billboard. So you haven't got to be too finicky about tiny little bits and pieces. It's wham, bam. Wow. Whoa, whoa, look at that. Oh, you know, one of those. Didn't meet him until... Um, oh, Grand Hotel too long. <laughs> First of all, on the on the day the, on the second day, Tom somehow I don't remember if he came down to the garage or whatever. He said to me and Charlie because we it was our job. It was Charlie and I who took it on, and we then pulled in the rest of the crew. Um, 
do you want a bonus? Do you want to come on the tower for a while? Uh, he said, there might be little fiddly things that need to be done. I don't know. He said, I don't know. He said, but if you've got a passport, do you want to come? We're, we're leaving tomorrow. Yeah, okay. Brilliant. Bonus. And I was quite, that's why I was quite excited when somebody found it, you know. And, and this whole thing is, uh, yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it was something in its time, wasn't it, you know. But it was, it was good. It, it's largely with the benefit of hindsight that the story's blowing up. And there you are with a, with a, with a, a, an open an open top bus driving down. Was it Route Seven or something? Route Seven, as you, yeah. As, as you head down towards the south of Ireland, eyes hanging out on stalks as they drove past at forty five miles an hour yeah, maximum. We were doing forty five in the Porsches. We're doing a lot more. Even the lorries were overtaking you, you know. But as soon as they, I mean, it had the name of the band on the back. It had a black and silver doubly flying doubly on the back, and underneath. Nicely sign written, Paul and Linda McCarthy, Danny Lane, Henry McCulloch, etc., 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 on the back of the bus. If you were behind the bus, you couldn't, it was right in front of you. <laughs> Boom. And people were going, oh, oh Paul McCartney, oh, people. <laughs> you know. Oh, I thought great. Yeah, what a nice way to go around the uh, south of France, you know, <laughs> especially, <laughs> you know. I had no idea that it would only go 35 miles an hour, though. <laughs> the paint job, I mean, People used to come by us on the motorways and everything, and they would just freak out when they... It had our names on the back of the bus and everything. It was, it was quite a trip, you know, it was really... A, a lot of people just made it made a big fuss over seeing that. And, uh, you know, we pulled into the, uh, the Captain Teebs in at the right. Eden Rock Hotel, probably one of the most expensive hotels in the world. Yeah. I could just see that bus pulling in there next to all of the fancy cars in the parking lot, and here's this hippie bus, you know, <laughs> a bunch of crazy guys jumping all around, taking and weird pictures and stuff. And it was a fun, fun tour. You know, we had wives and kids with us and stuff. And uh, and an image of the Beatles, uh, we, I think we had to be, uh, nobody wanted to be uh, drunk or, or high either. You know, we had, we thought it was very important that we gave our best, best performances because we, were, we knew we were going to be judged till the last time they saw the, the biggest band in the world. There were several tables and there was like a, a couple of bunk beds in the back. They were probably there for the kids. They weren't for any of the band members. I mean, we just got on the bus and made it our next, next destination. And I remember there were several times where uh, if we had to go like 150, 200 miles between cities, uh, it would take, you know, at 35 miles an hour, it would take quite a while. And there were times where the promoter at the other end would send some... Uh, BMW is out on the motorway to pick us up and rush us to the venue so we got there in time to to start the concert. I remember once in Germany there was a um, BMW's five lime green BMW's showed up on the motorway we got off the bus we each got into one of these lime green BMW's and did like 150 miles an hour into the venue <laughs> The paint job was just lovely. I mean, we still have all of the, the pictures, and, you know, we'd always take some pictures here and there, and we those were such formative years, you know. I mean, uh, they were very profound in many ways as far as my life went, you know, as going from a, a top session guy to becoming a band guy and, and perform, being part of a band called Wings, and, and that bus was a big part of it because the European tour was, that was our breaking out. That was... The other stuff before that was nice, but uh, this was saying, okay, we're ready now. And uh, we had put a lot of hard work into becoming a real band. After the tour in October 1972, Paul McCartney recorded tracks for the upcoming Red Rose Speedway album featuring the classic song, My Love. During the same sessions, they recorded Live and Let Die in June 1973, Paul McCartney and Wings released the first James Bond theme song to be nominated for an Oscar, Live and Let Die. A year later, in 1974, it was nominated for a Grammy. By 1976, Paul McCartney had written and performed his way back to the pinnacle of stadium rock and the 1972 Wings tour bus WNO481 had played its part with the biggest pop rock star in the world. When Paul McCartney gave WNO481 its wings, he created a legend of rock and road. WNO481, Paul McCartney's 1972 Wings Tour Bus. <laughs> <laughs> 